Hey guys, it's Terry with the Cover Chipboard, and I'm here today. We're going to create for one of my craft along projects this um, lantern for Halloween. I've created it using uh, a few images from Cricut Design Space and some images that I've created within Cricut Design Space. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we will be using uh, Cricut materials and a few little other pieces here and there. So I hope you'll join me and have some fun and make your own Halloween lantern. Okay guys, um, I'm just going to go ahead and start this. This is my um, spooky lantern project. It comes from um, Cricut Design Space. Uh, I'll have this written down um, on the post so that you know what materials to use and all of that. Um, so this is going to be basically just how to put it together. But to start with, I wanted to let you know these are the papers that I've used. They're all Cricut papers. I've used the Cricut Craft Board in black, the Deluxe Paper Steel Plate, and I used this pattern here. And then I've used the Foil Acetate Metallic Sampler, and I've used the one with the silver stars on it. I don't know if you can tell that here or not. And the shimmer paper in silver. And I don't have those pieces cut yet because that's a finishing part. So that gives you an idea. Again, I'm going to make a post on my blog that will give you all of these materials listing and how much I used on them. But, and I also have a guide on my post from Cricut Design Space telling you what parts are what because there's a lot of different parts here. Basically, we have three sections. We have the base, then we have the lantern section, and then we have the top, and finally the handle. So, um, the main base pieces will be cut from the Cricut uh, Black Craft Board. And I'll have a separate video on how to do this. This is the um, foil acetate, but I have sanded it to make it frosted so you can't see clear through it. And I'll show you how to do that in a separate little video. So let's get started with the base. Now you can use glue. Oh, and in all these parts, you have the black parts, which are the craft board, and you have the pattern paper, which is the finishing part. And some of the finishing you need to do along the way. So, <clears throat> the first thing you want to do, there's a bunch of these little pieces, which are, I think they're like one by uh, almost... Um, or one by one and a half or something like that. Anyway, divide them into threes. You'll need, um, each section will need three pieces. And all you're going to do, this does not have to be um, done neatly. You just want to glue all three pieces together because what you're going to do is make a, a, um, uh, a support that goes inside the base. Sammy, get out of there. I'm babysitting my son's pet, and she's nine months old, and she's into everything. So, once you get those three done, or those four done, you can just kind of set those aside for a minute. This is our main base. And um, this is a hole. I've left a hole in here, a big hole so that you could put one of the three inch um, electric candles in it. So these have little tabs on it, this part right here, and you wanna glue those tabs to the inside so that the edges are flush. So we'll start by doing that, and those I will glue. When you cut this out, the craft board, um, if you don't have the scoring tool, uh, you're going to have to score it by hand. 
as well because I don't think the traditional or the, the regular scoring tool they had is going to score this good enough. So, if you haven't invested in the scoring wheel, I would highly recommend that you do if you have the maker because I'll try to show you here. This is a piece that got messed up earlier, but it actually makes, I don't know if you can see this or not. Let me get some more light over here. It actually makes two scoring lines. So when you fold the um, craft board, it makes a much nicer fold and it doesn't um, crack or anything. See, I'm messy with glue. Okay, then these pieces should be folded down. And what you're going to do is take these. Hopefully they, this one didn't dry right. Hopefully they dried together real nice and you're going to put glue on one end and set them in here to give it kind of a support. And those will take a few minutes to dry. But you're not gonna see down inside there, so use a generous amount of glue. And just put that like that. Put these on all four corners. Try to keep them upright as you can. Yeah, nothing, the top part isn't gonna be that heavy, but I thought just for stability, this might be a good idea, so. Now, yeah, you wanna let those dry. And once those are dry, then you're going to have a uh, flat piece like this, and you want to glue it on to the top here. I've made two of them just for extra security, so I'm gonna use my score tape on this one to attach the other piece to. And I'm debating on whether to use glue or score tape on there. The glue tends to grab hold better when you're trying to put something on top because you're going to have to, to get this attached well, stick your hand in through here and try to go around and press on it. I just use a bone folder to help press that down so that it's got a good contact. Okay, let's hope this works good. If these are sticking up just a little bit, they'll grab hold better. So I'm going to go ahead and use glue and then um, to get a hold of it. Oops. Again, you're going to have to turn this upside down. So I'm going to start by just laying it on here. And then I'm going to kind of play with the sides until I get it pushed up next to it as close as I can. And wiggle it around and I'm just gonna hold it there for a few minutes then I'm gonna flip it over and stick my finger in here and press down as best I can without bothering those supports 
on those little flaps. It's pretty easy to get one finger up in there and press them down. There, that looks good. And leave that like that. This piece will go on top of here for finishing. And what I'm going to do, because I want, um, I don't want white edges showing like this has, so I'm going to use some distressing ink. If I can find, there it is. Uh, you can't see the top of that, it's Ranger Black Distressing Ink. It's called black soot and I'm just gonna take this down the sides of this so all it's doing is darkening up the side edges so we don't have the white edge showing now if you don't have any of this ink distressing ink you can use a black sharpie our black marker and run it along the edge and that will work just as good. I'm also going to run it down into the hole okay Now, for extra support, I'm going to add this piece on top, and all we're doing is just making the base stronger. Yeah, that piece goes on there. So, for this, I'm going to use score tape, and I'm going to run it along the edge. Just right up to the edge. And then I'm going to do a couple of pieces like this, just to help hold this section down better. I'm going to apply this on top of here in the same way with score tape. This is not, I need to cut a little piece off there. Check this because I think it has a specific way to go, but maybe not, maybe just off a little. The hole should be exact. Like there should, it should be a pretty good match right here because those are both three inch circles. You're going to have a little bit of a black showing around the edges here. So now let me take this off. Ah. And this all started with an image from Cricut Design Space. It was actually in the Halloween section, I think. It's a, a window with some jack-o'-lanterns in it. So now this should fit again. The circle should be exact. So it should pretty much line up perfectly. There we go. Now you can just take your hand, fingers and mash this down like this to get your score tape on there good. And that gives you a pretty sturdy base. And like I said, the top part shouldn't be that heavy, but you want it to hold up and last. So there's the top part. Now we have these side pieces. And I'm going to add these with score tape too, so I'm going to put my glue top back on. 
If you've not, if you're not familiar with score type, it's just double-sided type. Um, I get mine on Amazon, and I buy it like five rolls in a package. So these also need to have the edges done on them. These will just go on the sides all the way around. And you can use any kind of patterned paper here for this, or you could use glitter paper. Or you can leave it plain if you wanted. That's just kind of up to you. And I started out to make this a Halloween lantern, but I think I figured out a way that you could make the lantern and use it for different seasons or different holidays if you wanted. So there's our top part, the sides. The bottom will be plain. If you want, when we're done, you could put feet here to rise it up off of the table. But that's our base. And like I said, this is so that you can this has been set so that you can place a, um, a three inch electric candle in there so you could use a remote with it. Um, I don't like the tea lights, they run out too quick. So, and they don't give off as much light. Um, you can pick up the little three inch electric candles at Big Lots or Walmart or any place, a gazillion places, dollar store, pretty cheap. And they use regular, just check and make sure that when you buy them, they use regular batteries and not the round disc batteries. Unless you just like and have a supply of the disc batteries. So that's our first part, which is the base. Uh, when we come back, I'll be doing the um, center area with the um, acetate inserts to them. So... And that you might need some double-sided tape for, for the acetate sheets. So we'll be back shortly. Thank you.